Have you made your New Year's resolutions yet? Actually, it's January 3rd. Maybe I should ask, have you broken your New Year's resolution yet? Welcome to Plain English, the podcast that goes at the right speed for English language learners. Listen now and read the transcript online at plainenglish.com. Now, here's Jeff, your host for today's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Plain English, the first episode of the new year and episode number 117. The full transcript and instant translations are all available at plainenglish.com slash 117. Today, we are going to talk about New Year's resolutions, those little promises you make to yourself to change, to, to do better in the new year. The problem is, so many people break them within just a few weeks or a few months. So, I did some looking into how to make better resolutions and set better goals. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Okay, you know what time of year it is. It's the season of New Year's resolutions. Do you make those? A New Year's resolution is your promise to yourself to change a habit or make an improvement in your life. Many people choose January 1st, the new year, to begin these new habits. But guess what? Only about 10% of people keep a New Year's resolution all year long, and most people don't make it out of January. Yikes. So I thought for this first episode of 2019, I would do a little reading into the best advice for making and keeping New Year's resolutions and share with you what I found. So here's what I read. The most popular New Year's resolutions are to lose weight or get in shape to quit smoking, to save more money, to get more sleep, and to improve a relationship. And guess what? Those are all terrible resolutions. No, no, not because they're bad things in general, but because they're bad goals. They're too big. They're not measurable. The best resolutions are small, specific things that you can do regularly. Get more sleep is too murky. It's not definitive enough. You need to pick a resolution that's achievable and specific. So how about go to bed before 11 every time I have to work the next day. That's a better resolution than just get more sleep because it's specific and it's measurable. For most people, it's probably also achievable, which is a good thing. Okay, so after you make an achievable, specific, measurable goal... You need to come up with a plan. And to create a plan, you might have to trick yourself. You can start by asking, why are things not the way you want them today? If you're trying to change a bad habit, ask yourself, why do you do that thing you do? The trick is to find a way to give yourself the same good feeling that causes a bad habit 
only with something better for you. Let me give you one bad habit of mine. In the afternoons, I tend to crave a cup of coffee. But if I have too much coffee in the afternoon, then I tend to crave junk food before dinner. It throws off my diet. So I recently switched to hot tea in the afternoon, less caffeine. The reason is, I think I just wanted something a little bit indulgent, something warm, something to distract myself a little bit from work. And I found that having a cup of black tea in the afternoon gave me all the same pleasure as coffee, only without the caffeine that gives me the cravings for junk food later. So if you're trying to break a bad habit, look for the reason that you have this bad habit and try to substitute something else for your bad habit. Something not quite as bad. So that works for breaking a bad habit, but some goals are about starting something good, not stopping something bad. Let's say your resolution is to save more money. A good way to motivate yourself is to give yourself little rewards for hitting milestones along the way. Instead of saying you'll save a big amount for the whole year, set a goal of saving a smaller amount every month. And for every month you do save that amount of money, give yourself a little bit of a treat to stay motivated. The next tip I have for you is to track your progress. Make sure you write down when you succeed and when you fail. Try to get as many good days, weeks, months in a row as possible. There are some really good habit tracking apps out there that you can use for this. Finally, the last piece of advice I read from experts is to not beat yourself up if you fall short of your resolutions. If you fall short, if you overeat one day or you have too much to drink one night, whatever the case may be, don't be too hard on yourself. Nobody's perfect. Just remember that what's done is done and try to get back on a new streak in the future. You don't need to start every resolution on January 1st. If you find your resolution isn't going well on, say, February 10th, then just change it. Make the goal smaller, more manageable, or just start over. There's no need to wait for the next year. Okay, so I don't usually do New Year's resolutions. But after having done some reading on resolutions, I think I do want to try one this year. And I'm going to follow my own advice. Here's what I want to do. I want to break a bad habit, which is staying up too late with screen time on nights before work. So that could be either watching TV or working on my computer or getting lost like we all do, browsing stuff on my phone in bed. I took my own advice And I asked myself, why am I doing this? I think one answer is that I'm really busy during the day 
and when the evening comes around, I feel like I don't want to go to sleep without having a little time for myself. So even though it may be 1045, I feel like I want to watch an hour of TV and I wind up staying up too late and feeling tired the next day. It's a bad cycle. So here's my goal. I'm going to go to bed before 11 on any night before I have to go to work the next day. And since I know why I usually stay up too late, I'm going to dedicate an hour a day before it gets too late to do something nice for myself. Just an hour. It can be midday, at work, right after work, even before work, whatever. But if I do that, then when 11 o'clock rolls around, I won't feel like I haven't gotten any time for personal relaxation. And if for whatever reason I still want to stay up, I'm going to let myself cheat, but not with any type of an electronic screen. It has to be reading something on paper like a book or a magazine. So that's my resolution. You know, that reminds me of one other tip, and that is to have a support system. So good thing I have so many plain English friends around the world to keep me honest. I'll update you on my progress as the year goes by. So as you all know, JR is the producer. He's Mexican, and he taught me what New Year's resolution is in Spanish. It's Propositos de Año Nuevo. And I asked JR to share his thoughts on whether he thinks Propositos de Año Nuevo are a good idea or not. And here's what he has to say. I think New Year's resolutions are effective but not for the same reason that everybody thinks. I think they are effective because they are one way in which we acknowledge the changes we need to make in our lives for the better. We can use the occasion to take some time to think how we can improve our lives, eating healthy, drinking less alcohol, or quitting smoking. Some of them we don't work on for just one or two months. I remember seeing the gym full in January but empty by March. We can really achieve some resolutions, while there are others that we don't even try to fully reach. But the important thing is to be honest and be conscious of the fact that there's always a way to improve ourselves. If your New Year's resolutions are eating healthy and doing more exercise, reading more, and being more patient, then you can join my club. All right. Thanks, JR. If you're looking to make a resolution about English, then maybe you can resolve to improve your vocabulary. One great way to do that is with all the great resources at Mosa Lingua, our partner. Mosa Lingua has a fun, tech-savvy way of teaching languages. They have lots of resources exercises, pictures, audios, videos, tons of resources to help you learn the words you need to know. And you just learned to make a specific resolution. So maybe practice with Moza Lingua for five minutes a day, five times a week. That would be a good resolution, specific and measurable, right? So if you would like to learn more about what they have to offer at Mosa Lingua, check out plainenglish.com slash learn, L-E-A-R-N, and you can sign up for a free trial, plainenglish.com slash learn. Okay, the phrasal verb I want to share with you today is fall short. When you fall short of something, you don't quite achieve it. 
You got close, but you didn't quite make it. Many people fall short of achieving their New Year's resolutions. They try, but they don't make it. This can apply in a wide range of situations. A sports team might fall short of a championship. Do you remember the World Cup this year? Oh, I guess that's last year since it's 2019 now. Do you remember the World Cup last year? Tiny Croatia surprised so many people and made it to the final game against France. They became the favorite of a lot of fans who wanted to see the small underdog win the whole prize. But in the final game, Croatia fell short. They scored just two goals and lost to France 4 to 2. Although they played very well in the whole tournament, they fell short of winning it all. The performance of the stock market in the US fell short of many predictions this year, especially since it's been going down the last few months. You can also fall short of someone's expectations or even your own expectations. It's generally not a good thing if you fall short of your expectations at work. That means you're not doing a good enough job. If you fall short of your own expectations, you're not acting as well as you think you should. I just went away for a few days after Christmas. And I was hoping for warm weather. But although it was warmer than it is in Chicago, the weather where I was fell short of my hopes and expectations. It was cloudy and rainy the whole time. A couple other ways to use fall short you can fall just short of something if you almost made it. Or you can fall well short if you're not even close. Croatia fell just short of winning the World Cup. They made it to the final game. They almost got there, but they fell just short and lost the last game. Fernando Haddad, meanwhile, fell well short. Of the votes needed to become Brazil's president. Instead, Jair Bolsonaro won by a big margin. His opponent fell well short. Okay, that does it for today. Thanks for being with us again here in 2019. Tell me what your New Year's resolutions are and whether you think you'll be able to meet them. The email addresses are Jeff, J E F F, at plainenglish.com for me, and JR at plainenglish.com for JR. Have a great weekend, and we'll be back on Monday. 